cars are such a statement of where we are in time and, and there's so many aspects that go into building a car, the shape of it, the mechanical aspects of it, and I find that that has a certain depth and richness of all the different elements that are in building a car. Racing cars, there's a lot more reasons not to do it other than you just have to do it and I battle with that. I must race them though. in Mexico. It's not a war, but you're tracking across this history that is this country from one end to the other on the Pan American Highway. And to doing that in a car that I've built was tremendous. I, I knew it would be because I've enjoyed that experience before, building cars for the Milli Milli in Italy, building cars to race here in the States. I've been doing that my whole life since I was 15 and a half. I built cars from the ground up and raced them. And I love that connectivity to every single piece. I'm Conrad Stevenson, and I consider my profession to be restoring old alphas, or at least trying. It's a 1965 Julia Sprint Special. Elaborata <laughs> means it's been changed a little bit for the race, for speed a little bit, but mostly it's safety. I believe that the event deserves a car of great passion to be built for it. Pretty much from the waist down, it's all my sheet metal and it's just one little piece at a time. I don't try to make it all in one piece. It's hard to do that. So it's like a patchwork quilt. Well, I was led to build this particular car for the La Carrera Panamericana after having run it. Initially, I ran in 2001 with some friends in a Studebaker and had an extraordinary time. Later, a friend approached me to drive his car with him and he had bought the taxi, El Perdido, the lost taxi. We ran that for three years reasonably successfully and that led me to want to build my own car for the event. When I would return from Mexico running the taxi or the other cars, I would always draw cars like, this will be my next one. I started drawing this car. Uh, before I even had the car. I thought an SS would be a good shape. I didn't want to cut up a car that was already very nice, and I happened to know a friend who had my car hanging on his fence. I've been restoring cars for so long, I know that there's not enough time to build a car ever, so I gave myself just one year to build this car, just sort of as a challenge to see, can you do that? And he was kind enough to volunteer not only the car to me, but also came down and helped on weekends build it. I had a sense for what I wanted a car to be able to do. The demands are unique for this race. You know, have to have a car that can run very fast, very hard, and then cool down very quickly. You have to have fans. There's also tow pace or speed bumps, which you must be able to hit at about 80 miles an hour. You can't have a car that won't be able to do that. The roll cage, having seen accidents there that would not have been survivable in an Alpha with the way the steering box was located. I decided to build a car exactly for this, addressing all of the issues I could see, keeping within the rules of the regulations, which are to be of a certain type for a certain year of car. And it's a very specific thing. The first car I personally bought was an Alpha, so I didn't really have the chance to experience the alternate. I don't think they're all that, but they have a great deal of depth when you look at the history and that. And I'm proud to run an Alpha. Uh, I like that they've, in my lifetime, usually been the underdog. They've been suffering. They've never been the Ferrari or a Porsche or the car that's on top. And so uh, I love the sort of David and Goliath and being David. And I relate to the car that it's not big, it's not overpowered. It's just a balance of what you can do with a car and they're very enjoyable to use. I took what Alpha did with a Sprint Special and the early cars were most appealing to me. And these cars had a lower nose and held to the ground much better. 
the later cars had a higher nose. So when I had only the roof, I felt it fair to make the early body. So I've sort of taken liberties with this style. I'm not presenting this car to Pebble Beach. It's not an authentic 65 car, but it is, I believe, true to what the designer, Bertone, intended. I think the thing of the Alphas that I like, that is sort of the pre-Fiat years, is there was this continuity that they had, real masterpieces that were Alphas or before the war. And those guys kept building cars and they had this great connection from the designers before the war to the designers after the war. And these little Juliettas and Julias and the 105 cars had this lineage to guys that had continually refined this car. And I think that's a really good thing that Alphas had. That's the real draw to Alphas for me. Building cars is just, for me, it's like a challenge. Um, yeah, but it's also been like going to school. It's, you put tools in your toolbox. Going to engineering school, it's learning to beat a panel or use an English wheel, building motors and running them on the dynos and making changes and listening to guys that are better at what I do in their disciplines. That whole process of learning and experiencing all the different facets that make up a car are what are interesting to me about building a car. Race cars, see what you can do. See how fast you are. It's time to do it. You're willing to risk it all, too. You're, you built this car, and yeah, I'm hugely invested in this car. And I'm willing to race it as fast as I can. And I think that's important to do in life, and not be all careful and stay at home on the couch and saying, oh my gosh, there's all these reasons I shouldn't do this. There's none of that. Life's too short. You have to do it. You have to go. And racing and competing in a race like La Carrera in Mexico you're just making up excuses if you don't want to do it. It's actually kind of a downer when it's over, and I want to think, well, what next? You know, there's got to be more. I have to set a new challenge, and uh, that's what I live for.